What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to The Breakdown, the series where I analyze gameplay to help you improve. In today's episode, we're going to be analyzing an exceptional Team Deathmatch gameplay from Boss Socks Fan 15 Let's get into it. Alright guys, so with this series, I normally analyze average to below average gameplay for you because I can point out mistakes a whole lot easier than pointing out uh, sort of things that are that players are doing right because there's not really one right way to play something most of the time in today's episode by your guys' request I'm gonna try something new here and I'm going to analyze an exceptional gameplay now I will say that the enemies that this guy was playing against they were pretty bad they were terrible but this is a team deathmatch DNA bomb which is not easy even against enemies that are not very good. So I'm still going to analyze it. There's a lot of things in this gameplay that I would like to point out that will help people out. So I do realize he is playing against people that are not good at the game. They're brand new to the game. So I, I'm totally expecting comments saying, oh, he was just playing people that suck. That's true, but it's still not easy to get a DNA bomb in Team Deathmatch. So let's kick it off with the class that he decided to use. Now, there's actually nothing wrong with this class at all. This is basically one of the perfect DNA bomb classes that you could have. He's got the ASM-1 with foregrip, advanced rifling, and extended mags. Uh, the only thing I'd maybe change is foregrip. I feel like the ASM-1 has very low recoil anyways, but it works for him, and there's nothing wrong with using a foregrip on the ASM-1. For perks, he has low profile, which is awesome, helps him stay off the radar. Uh, peripherals, which is great because you can see a lot more of your minimap, especially with the UAV that he's using. And then perk 3, Toughness and Blast Suppressor. Those two are a given for me all the time. You should always be running Toughness and Blast Suppressor if you're planning on challenging enemies at a bit of a distance. Blast Suppressor for sure. Toughness, most of the time I would recommend running Toughness. For score streaks, these are the big ones that help contribute to earning a DNA bomb. And these are the two streaks that are going to help you earn DNA bombs more often. So score streak number one is the UAV with enemy direction, threat detection, and I believe that's speed. I could be mistaken on that one, uh, but great fully upgraded UAV. It is quite a few kills to earn. He's going to have to get 10 kills in team deathmatch to earn that, but it's very, very useful, especially if your enemies aren't using low profile, which it didn't seem like many of them were in this gameplay. And the second score streak that he's using is the system hack with assist points. Now he actually earns the system hack before the UAV. So these assist points, they will contribute to earning that UAV a little bit faster. All right, guys, so getting into the gameplay itself, a big thing I want to really point out with this gameplay is the way he moves around the map. You'll see he's using the single jump and then dashing forward a lot. That's a move that I don't see enough people doing. It's very, very effective for dashing between cover and moving around the map a little bit more effectively. And he also knows all the places to check. You can see his sights are up all the time. He's checking doorways where he could expect enemies to be. Uh, he's moving around the map relatively methodically, and he's also paying attention to his minimap. You can tell he knows the safe areas because his teammates are there on the minimap, so he doesn't have to worry about them too much. So he's definitely paying attention to that. And coming up right here is something that I also really like about his gameplay that I'm going to point out a lot, and that is patience. You'll notice there, instead of rushing head on right into that guy that he saw, he laid down, waited for his enemy to get a little bit closer, waited for his enemy to get within range, and then he killed him. As for the other three enemies that he killed there, I'll be completely honest, if those players had any kind of skill at all, they should have killed him. He actually should have died in that situation. Uh, the simple fact is, he's playing against people that aren't good at the game, they're brand new to the game. Like, I don't think there's anyone above, like, level 20 in this game. Uh, but, yeah, if he was against anybody that really knew what they were doing, they would have killed him very easily there. And you'll see that a few times throughout the gameplay. Another thing I want to point out is I actually looked up his stats on CodTracker.net. You can look up people's stats. He is not a reverse booster. He actually has a positive kill death ratio and everything. Actually, a fairly relatively high kill death ratio. He's not a reverse booster, uh, but this could have been a new account as well because he is like a level 42 or something like that. So I just want to get that out of the way before people start leaving comments. But you'll see the way he moves around the map. It's methodically. He's constantly moving. And he's very patient with the way he moves. So right here, instead of rushing out into the open, he's waiting because he's not too sure where those enemies are. Waits till that teammate challenges his enemy. Then he pops out and tries to challenge. Uh, he doesn't just rush out into the open. He's using cover to his advantage. He's always got a place to escape from. You'll also notice that. He doesn't get too far away from his teammates. If you pay attention to the minimap, he tries to stay at least somewhat close to his teammates. 
And they, this gives him an escape route all the time. He can always back off to his teammates if he gets into a situation he doesn't like. And you'll see that a lot. Like right there, picks off a kill, backs off to the safety of his teammates. Or at least relative safety of his teammates. He knows that he's not going to get shot in the back because his teammates are there. So he can just worry about his front and picking off the people that are directly in front of him. And you'll see a lot of the times he's very patient. He aims down sight around corners and he waits for the right moment to strike. He doesn't just rush like a chicken with his head cut off all over the map. He picks off one kill at a time. He'll back off. He'll try a different angle. He's constantly moving around the map trying to juke out his enemies. And this is something I really like about his gameplay and something you guys can definitely pick up from his gameplay if you're struggling to rush effectively. Uh, he did leave it a little bit long before picking up that gun. That's actually one of my downfalls uh, when I'm trying to go on high streaks is I don't pick up guns enough. Uh, he should have picked up a gun earlier. It worked out for him just fine there, but uh, just one thing, he could have gotten to a really sticky situation there because he was completely out of ammo pretty much with his ASM-1, but it did work out for him. So you'll see now he's not getting too far away from his teammates. He's slowly pushing up. He's waiting for the enemies to come to him as well which is another good tactic. If you can shoot an enemy while they're sprinting straight at you, they have almost no chance of winning that gunfight and you're gonna win that gunfight most of the time. So it's a really smart way to play it. Some people would say he's maybe camping here. I wouldn't say that. He's controlling the middle of the map. He's kind of patrolling around here, waiting for his enemies to come off spawn, using his teammates to his advantage. And he's constantly watching where his teammates are, where he's safe from and where he's not safe from. And this is where that UAV comes in. As soon as you get a UAV like that with threat detection and everything that he has on that UAV, if your enemies are not running low profile, it's basically game over for them. Uh, it's pretty much as effective, if not more effective, than the VSAT was in uh, Black Ops 2. So that was it. It was a really quick gameplay. He got his DNA bomb. Again, he was playing enemies that were not good at the game. At least for the most part, they had no idea what they were doing, so uh, I, I do realize that. But other than that, he did have some very good moments in that gameplay, and he demonstrated a lot of uh, characteristics of a really solid player. So I hope you guys can pick up something from this gameplay. So that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of The Breakdown. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not going to be analyzing exceptional gameplay a lot, like not too often. I think I just want to throw the odd exceptional gameplay in there every now and then. I still want to be analyzing average to below average gameplay most of the time because mistakes are a lot easier to point out than when they're doing something right. So if you'd like to submit a gameplay for me to analyze, keep in mind if you've already submitted a gameplay, there's still a chance it's going to be used. I've actually got a couple saved up that I'm still going to be using. But if you'd like to send me a gameplay, then just send a link to an unlisted video to the email address that I will leave in the description below. And keep in mind I'm looking for HD quality, so at least 720p. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.